Good afternoon. Uh, welcome back to Ask Sabado. I was hoping or I thought I would wait until next week to put up my next video, but as I started thinking about this video and thinking about the advice that uh, we get as people, I started to really think about where are all the places that I got advice because it, you know, one of the questions you have to ask yourself is, why is anybody going to listen to me? I'm some random guy on the internet uh, named Salvador Higante. And as I started to think about it, I realized that through the course of my life, and I think what was the precipice for this channel, was that a lot of the advice that I got that allowed me to eventually work my way down the path and retire at 52, uh, a lot of that advice came from unconventional places. And so I... Uh, thought I'd share with you one of the most unconventional places that I've got. Uh, I've obtained some some life changing advice um, it, and I, I didn't even really realize it at the time. So before we get started, I'd just like to encourage you. Number one, welcome you uh, to the channel. Or, and if, this, if you've been here before, welcome back to the channel. But I encourage you, if you like this and you find it useful in any way, you could go ahead and hit that like button or uh, and subscribe. Um, helps me continue to bring more content and, and help more people, uh, real people with real situations, get real answers from uh, from a real person. So, um, and if you, you can also send an email to me at therealsalvadorhigante at gmail.com and have your questions answered there. But let's get into it. So about 30 years ago, uh, I was in college and I used to ride the bus. And for those of you that ride public transportation, you know that sometimes you have conversations on the bus that you don't want to have. And so because I was on the bus every day, riding every day, uh, I used to wear headphones, real big headphones. I had an afro and over my afro were the headphones. And that was my way of keeping people from talking to me on the bus because a lot of those conversations were really a bridge to nowhere. And one day I was sitting at a bus stop with my headphones on, listening to some Tribe Called Quest, and I saw an individual walking across the street. And I have to set the scene up for you because I, it's still, it's, it's unbelievable, but it happened. So I'm sitting at the bus stop, I look up, and I see an individual walking across the street, and he had a, a little bit of a twitch, and he was really doing more shuffling than walking. And he walked right in the middle of the street, all the cars were skidding and stopping so they don't hit them. And this individual walked right up to me and looked me in the eye, eyes and said, hey, um, he looked at my t-shirt and said, hey, isn't Howard University a black university in Washington, D.C.? And at the time, it, I had no, he did not appear to me to be somebody that would know about Howard University. I thought in my mind, I didn't know I wasn't as worldly as I am now, I didn't have the level of understanding, and uh, I didn't understand how he might under know that Howard University was a black college back in Washington, D.C. I had my headphones on, I'm six foot eight, and I'm sitting at the bus stop. So none of that made sense to me. So I took my headphones off, looked at him, and said, uh, yeah, this, uh, Howard University is a black university in, in Washington, D.C. And he says, do you go to Howard University? And I said, no, I go to one of the local schools here. And he, it was interesting because at that moment, he said, I went to school there. And so then my interest peaked because my questions then became, how did you get from there to here? And so he laid it out for me. And he said, I was a double major in finance and accounting. I was taking 19 units a semester. I was working full time and I was just going, going, going all the time. And it led me to having a nervous breakdown. And that led me to a course of uh, events. And then now I live in this halfway house around the corner and I'm a paranoid schizophrenic. And I'm, I, don't, I'm, I don't claim or purport to be a psychologist or have any understanding of that kind of stuff. But it was interesting because the fact that he, he told me all that kind of piqued my interest. And so, you know, we talked, we sat on the bus for a while. And at the end of that conversation, he told me something really interesting. He says, don't ever take yourself too serious because if you do, you may end up like me. And that stuck with me because at that same time, I didn't have a double major, but I was taking my 17 
16, 17 units. Uh, I was working at the time. I was riding a bus to school. I had a lot of different things going on. And, you know, I was partying every night and doing homework every day and just, you know, just trying to make it. And you get going, going, going. Well, anyhow, I get off of the bus and he goes on his way. And I thought I'd never see this individual again. One day, I was, uh, a few months later, I was standing with a couple of my buddies. And again, I'm six foot eight. My buddies are all six five, six four, six two, and so on. None of them are six foot eight, except for me. And we're standing in front of the student union because all the cool people stood in front of the student union because that's where the cool people hung out. So we were sitting there being cool, standing up. And I remember this day specifically because it was after a bunch of rains and there was this big puddle that was off to the left. Um, and I could see it out of the corner of my eye and in the puddle, there were these birds. I don't know if they were pigeons. I don't know what they were. Uh, but I could see these birds off to the left. Didn't think much about it. I'm standing there being cool with all the rest of the cool people in the area. And all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I see these birds flutter out of the water. And then I look over and who do I see? I see this same person that approached me at the bus stop with that same twitch and that same shuffle shuffling through the water. He walked up to me, eyeball to eyeball, in front of my friends, all of my friends, 6'5", 6'2", 6'1", none of them 6'8", stood right in front of me, looked me eyeball to eyeball, and says, you doing all right? And at that moment, I had this moment of clarity. I knew exactly what he was talking about. Am I taking myself too serious? Am I charging too hard? Am I doing things that I shouldn't do? And I looked at him and I said, I'm going to be fine and I'm doing okay. He says, that's good. Take care of yourself. And then he, he, turn, he turned around and then just proceeded to go on. I never saw that individual again. Well, it's interesting because through the course of my life, in order to get to the place that I eventually uh, got to, there were a lot of things that I had to do. I had to finish school. I had to get a career. I had to move and shake. And I think in one of my earlier videos, I talked a little bit about how I would travel 40 weeks a year and give advice to people. I was traveling for consultation and I was doing a bunch of stuff um, and I was just charging hard. And because I wanted to climb the corporate ladder, my ambitions were the most important thing in my world. But that came at a cost. Uh, you know, friend relationships, home relationships, personal relationships all suffered because I wasn't able to take the time to make sure that I, I, I fostered those relationships in the way they need to be fostered. And, you know, sure, I, I experienced a, a level of success because I was flexible and I was what they would call Johnny on the spot whenever something needed to happen. But my ambition caused me to drive and drive and drive. And then I reached a point in my life where as, as Jimi Hendrix says, castles made of sand fall in the sea, things started falling down around me. And I, 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 I sat back to myself and I thought to myself, self, somebody's told you, somebody predicted this in your life way before you thought it was going to be possible. And it turned out it was the same in that one individual that I saw at the bus stop on my way to school uh, was the person that predicted that this could happen. Guess what? It happened and I had to go back and think about the advice that he gave me. Don't take yourself too serious because you might end up like me. And I will tell you, I was about 30 pounds heavier. I had stress issues. I had GERD. I had all these things. I had just, it was, it was, I was a mess. And so at that point, I, I, I made it a point to really try to prioritize where is it that I want to go? What is it that I want to do? And really just look at, you know, what's important to me? Who are the types of people that I need in my life? What types of friendships do I need? What type of relationships do I need? Um, and from that point on, I just started to look at things for what they were as opposed to what I wanted them to be and really started to focus on what was important in my life. And my life took a complete swing. I started to find more satisfaction and my relationships. Uh, I started to find more satisfaction in my friendships. I started to find more satisfaction at work. 
in another episode, we'll talk a little bit about work because I think work is work and there's work and there's working, but we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that another time. Uh, but I started to find that balance and I was able to be mindful because I had the capacity to think in a more balanced way. And as I started to become more balanced, then when I'd find those critical places in my life where I needed to find answers, those answers were there. I was able to reason through those answers, figure out what is it that I need to do. Didn't always have the answers, but always was able to find a way to get from A to Z. And it all came from that one individual who I'll call John. And so folks, as you're sitting back and dealing with what's going on in your lives, uh, just think about John, because we all have a John in our life that is somebody that is, uh, that, that's going to provide you wisdom when you don't expect it. And it's never going to be everything. I will never convey to you that I have all the answers to everybody's problems because I don't. Um, but I do know that sometimes the perspective that you get for one issue may help you in a different issue down the road because the answer might be right, but the context may be incorrect. And so, you know, I thought I'd share that with you. It was, it was just something I had been thinking about, um, for the last day or so. And, um, you know, I, I, I hope it resonates with you and I, I hope to hear from you. Tell me what you think. If you, uh, tell me about the, 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 John that you've met in your life, that's the person that's come into your life. That's, that's changed your life. You know, some people call them angels. Some people, there's, there's a host of names for them, but tell me about them. I'd be interested to know those times. And, and again, what I hope to be for you is I hope to be able to help you gain some perspective on things that you might be dealing with in a way that, uh, nobody's judging you. Um, you know, I'm not one of the people in your friend circle that's going to go tell the rest of your friends or tell your relatives or make fun of you or, or anything like that. I just, I'm just here to help. Um, I want to help you, you know, as they say, live your best life. So, and it's, and again, it's real people talking about real issues for real solutions. That doesn't happen until, unless we have the conversation. So again, thank you again for, for hearing my story. I'm going to continue to upload content. I look forward for, to hearing from each of you. Um, what your stories are, some of the things that are going on with you, some of the things I might be able to, to help you with. And, uh, in, and please drop me a note uh, in the comments below. You could go to uh, therealsabadohigante at gmail.com and send me a message there. Um, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. So again, thank you for joining and hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.